So uh, I'm just trying to get it to share my slideshow. I don't, can you see the slideshow or can you just see me? No, we can see the slideshow as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. fantastic. OK. Um, OK, brilliant. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to Stephen and the conference organisers for letting me speak today. Um, so my research primarily focused on the rural settlements of the Southwest Peninsula, so Cornwall, Devon, West Somerset and the Isles of Scilly. So the area ascribed to the tribe of the Domnoni, Domnoni sorry. Um, the area has often been ignored in the grand narratives of Britannia and most of the research that had been undertaken had focused on the military installations, so Exeter um, and Exeter is the only known town as well and the few villa sites within the region. Um, very little research had been conducted on rural sites. So the principal aim of my thesis was to explore the relationship between material culture and the creation of identity. In particular, I focused on ceramics, personal adornment items and coins and the roles these played in the renegotiation of identity that resulted from the conquest. The main aim for the main objective was to re-evaluate the material assemblages and to shed new light on changing social practices and how material culture was used and how and if this reflected changing identities of the communities and individuals in the Southwest. So to achieve this, I collated the data from excavation reports, um, so anything I could get access to, um, along with all the finds recorded through the PAS at the time into a database, which I was able to interrogate um, in order to answer the research questions I'd set out. Um, so I don't have time to talk about everything, so I'm just going to focus on the ceramic evidence for the region um, for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, ceramic vessels play a role in social practice, which informs on the creation and maintenance of identity by individuals and groups. So changing preferences in forms can suggest a shift in dining practices, for example. Analysis of consumption patterns can inform us on the changes in social practice and consequently on how on how identity was renegotiated through time. Using these ideas, I formulated two key questions for the, um, the data set. First was to identify which forms and fabrics were most common within the study region and how this changed from the late Iron Age through the Roman period. And the second was whether dining habits changed through time or whether the communities continued to consume forms that reinforced traditional Iron Age practices. So it's been established elsewhere that Iron Age eating practices involved families or groups um, consuming food in a communal fashion from large jars or large bowls while eating small portions from your own bowl or plate or dish was more of a Roman tradition. So in order to examine changes in the eating and dining practices, I grouped forms into broader categories of tablewares and drinking vessels, which are mentioned throughout. So tableware includes bowls, dishes, plates and platters with drinking vessels of beakers, cups, flagons and tankards. So I was able to input data from 130 excavations, which equates to 120 sites. Uh, the vast majority are in Cornwall and Devon, with only four sites on the Isles of Scilly and 10 in West Somerset. And there were quite a few sites I couldn't incorporate, which was largely due to the lack of artifact information. Um, I needed quite detailed information for what I wanted to do. Um, I split the data into seven ceramic phases, but for speed here, I grouped it into four phases. So I'm going to talk about the middle to late Iron Age, the conquest period, the early to middle Roman period, and the middle to late Roman period. Um, so I must note that the data for the middle to late Iron Age is fairly limited as I only collected data from sites that continue to be occupied during the Romano British period. So it's not a complete picture here. Um, during the South, during this period, the Southwest and decorated wares were the dominant ceramic tradition within the Southwest, originating at the end of the fourth century BC. Towards the end of the late Iron Age, these ceased to be produced and new fabrics appeared, such as cordon wares, which were introduced in the late second century into Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. In Somerset, excavations at the hill fort of Norton and Fitzwarren have shown locally produced fabrics were utilised, along with southwestern decorated wares. Analysis of ceramics has shown these consisted of quartz, limestone and grog tempered wares, which were thought to have been made locally. Very little Middle Age. Middle Iron Age ceramic material has been recorded from sites in Devon and it had been thought that communities were largely a ceramic until the later Iron Age when southwestern decorated wares begin to appear. Recently though, late Iron Age plainware has been recognised. A handful of sites and radiocarbon dates have suggested it starts to be used in the first century BC into the first century AD. You also get your Georgian wares coming in from Dorset and these are found on sites in southern and eastern Devon. The forms in use at this time were predominantly jars with a small number of bowls and cooking pots identified. And these forms show that communal eating from large pots um, was a normal practice. The bowls present should not be considered as a suite of tablewares as these examples are not small shallow forms, but often deeper and so had the capacity to hold larger amounts of food. 
The only imported ceramic that appears in the region uh, for my data set um, during the late Iron Age is amphora, and there are only two represented, although I, I am aware there are more. Um, but both of the types I was able to put into my database were Dressel 1A types, um, which uh, date to the late second to first century BC and contain wine. The final decades of the late Iron Age um, and into the conquest period, the number of ceramic vessels drops. Um, however, the data showed that a number of imported fabrics being consumed did increase, although this is a very slight increase. Um, so a single Terra Nigra cup is known from the round of Trevisca and Amphora have been found at two other sites in Cornwall. You also get the black burnish wear coming in, um, becoming more widespread in Devon. Tablewares and drinking vessels begin to appear in the record for the first time with beakers, but beakers and dishes being present, although these are again confined to a very small number of sites. Um, the distribution map shows the tablewares were more popular than drinking vessels in this period, with the majority found in Devon. The early to middle Roman period, um, so by the mid first century BC, a number of new courseware industries had appeared within Devon, so the extra greyware industry, for example, which continued to grow after the military withdrew from the region. Local fabrics are generally favoured over the imported coursewares, with extra greywares dominating the assemblage for Devon and Gabroic fabric dominating in Cornwall. There was an increase in the amount of imported finewares being consumed, unsurprisingly, the most numerous of the imports were Sapien. The number of vessels found in Cornwall, um, which is shown on this chart, is slightly misleading as 107 of the 120 vessels were found on a single site at Carvossa, with the rest coming from only six sites. So if we exclude the Samian, the only other continental imports found in Cornwall during this period are a single vessel in central Gaulish glazeware, together with another Terra Nigra vessel. Although the numbers aren't high, the majority of the imported fabrics have been recovered from sites in Devon. The number of forms consumed increased substantially with flagons, plates, platters, storage, storage jars, tankers and mortaria now being used. As you can see in the chart, the change is not just confined to Devon, but communities of Cornwall also began to use these new forms. It's clear from the distribution mapping that tablewares and drinking vessels were more popular with communities in Devon, and the mapping shows a similar distribution of both tablewares and drinking vessels across Cornwall, although in terms of numbers, drinking vessels are better represented for Cornwall. Moving on to the mid to late Roman period, the number of vessels consumed increased quite dramatically um, before they dropped off um, before towards the end of the fourth century. The increase in vessels is largely due to a further growth in the local courseware industries. The decline of the fortress wear and greyware industries in the late second and early third centuries appears to have opened up the market to other coursewares produced within Devon. So South Devon wear um, in particular became more popular and uh, was much more widely distributed. By the middle of the third century, it was being produced in far greater quantities and continued in production into the fifth century. The fact that a number of ceramic industries appeared in Devon during the late Roman period applies that there is some, was something different happening here. Courseware fabrics um, from some of the major Roman kilns, aside from uh, the black burnish ware, were also utilised for the first time during this period. The vast majority of these were consumed by communities in eastern Devon. The lack of these fabric types within the wider study region appears to have been a conscious choice by communities rather than a lack of access um, to them as uh, fine wear fabrics from Roman kilns, such as the Oxford wear industry, were consumed by communities within Cornwall and Somerset, albeit again in very small numbers. In the case of Cornwall, the lack of coarse wear vessels in imported fabrics is likely due to the strong tradition of Gabroic clays, which appear to play a specific role in society. Although it's hard to tell from this chart, fine wares imported from the continental kilns also increased in numbers during this period. Although a number of fabric types consumed did drop, the production of Lyon ware and the North Gaulish fabrics that Terra Nigra had ceased by this period, with Argonne ware beakers and ceramic a la Ponge flagons being consumed instead. What is again clear is that the majority of these vessels in continental fabrics were consumed by communities in Devon with very few consumed elsewhere. The numbers of tablewares and drinking vessels continue to increase, so the map shows the distribution pattern altered, with a number of sites consuming tablewares is shown to have increased, with the actual numbers of vessels consumed more than tripling. At the same time, although the overall numbers of drinking vessels drop, the distribution patterns of these vessels change, with a number of communities utilising these vessels for the first time, while others who consume the vessels previously no longer use them. This change is also reflected in the number of mortaria consumed, with a large increase in overall numbers between the early mid, um, early to mid and mid to late Roman period. Sorry. 
Before moving on to my conclusions, I just wanted to discuss gabroic clay and vessel production in Cornwall. So the gabroic clay formations within Cornwall are limited to a small area on the Lizard Peninsula, as we heard yesterday. These clays were utilised from the Neolithic period until the early 8th century AD for the production of ceramic vessels. The longevity of use of gabbro clay indicates that it held a special meaning to communities who utilised it, which were widespread across Cornwall, with very little gabbroic fabric moving eastwards beyond the River Tamar. Imogen Wood conducted petrographic analysis of gabbroic ceramics used during the late Roman and early medieval transition period, with ceramics from three sites subjected to testing. The results, results showed that the clay mixture was unique to each site, indicating that gabbroic clays were mixed with local clays and that the amount of gabbroic clay within the vessels dropped over time. So she, she suggested that the use of gabbroic clay reinforced a sense of regional identity with the local clays used linked to a more local identity. The fact that the amount of gabbroic clay within the fabric drops over time suggests that this regional identity became less important into the early medieval period. If gabbroic clay is indeed a marker of regional identity, then its continued dominance throughout the Roman period would suggest that the conquest had a negligible, negligible sorry, effect on the social and political networks of the area. <clears throat> At the time of the conquest, gabbroic fabric accounted for 92% of the ceramic assemblage in Cornwall, and this altered during the early to mid-Roman period with the figure dropping to 83%. Um, and for the mid to late Roman period, it drops further for 70 to 78%. The increasing number of fabrics in use by the later Roman period, coupled with the fact that many of these were coarse wares, indicates that there was a shift in social political networks at this time. It has been assumed in the past that the production centre um, with one or more kilns must have existed on the Lizard Peninsula. And this does not appear to be the case, though, with the clay being extracted and traded in its raw state or by individuals who made the trip to the Lizard to extract the clay themselves and then worked it into vessels at their home sites. Um, it's becoming more, um, more petrographic testing has been done on gabbroic fabrics um, in Cornwall and you get a very similar pattern to what Imogen found. So we've, we've now got a gabbroic variant. So it seems that where they were working pots on their home sites, they were incorporating local clay as well. <clears throat> um, the forms produced across Cornwall were standardised, which has allowed a regional typology for the late Iron Age and Roman gabbroic vessels to be constructed. The standardization shows strong regional ties between the communities, which allowed them to produce such similar forms with little variation. There is, though, some outside influence during the, this time, so rim forms copy those of black burnished wares. The standardization and dominance of jars and large bowl forms in the late Iron Age indicate that these communities had similar social practices regarding eating and drinking. After the conquest, new vessel forms, tablewares and drinking vessels were introduced, and it is clear that the vast majority of these were consumed in imported fabrics. So only 1% of cups, flagons and dishes were produced in gabbroic clays, while only one uh, mortarium is known in the fabric, although as we heard yesterday, gabbroic clay was likely too soft for the grinding and pounding actions mortaria were used for. The exception to this rule, or to this, is the bowl forms, with over 400 bowls that could be considered to hold individual servings to be produced having been produced in gabbroic fabric. The fact that gabbroic was not heavily used to produce these new forms, bowls aside, suggests that for these communities, gabbroic clay, gabbroic clay had a very special meaning that was tied to their ancestral past, which continued to bind them together throughout the Roman period. The introduction of these new forms does suggest that dining habits and so part of identity of these communities altered, although the underlying political structures do not appear to have altered dramatically. The consumption of these new forms and imported fabrics allowed these communities to separate their new dining habits from more traditional practices bound up in the use of gabbroic fabric. The fact that imported fabrics were favoured for these new forms also shows that these vessels were not selected in order to reinforce traditional practices, but that they were new and exotic items. So the data I collected does show that there was a change in forms and fabrics consumed by communities across the southwest and it altered during the very light, late Iron Age period and throughout the Roman period. In the years surrounding the conquest, there was a drop in vessel numbers, which may just be due to a lack of excavated evidence, although there was also a drop in numbers of personal adornment items in the archaeological record for this period. In my thesis, I suggested that this drop in artefacts indicated that society was undergoing a period of restructuring and the drop off in ceramics and personal adornment items actually coincide with an increase in the occurrence of high status metalwork. So decorated mir mirrors, items of horse gear, 
Uh, also with a change in the way the dead were treated as they become archaeologically invisible at this time. I suggested that these changes were linked to a shift in power relations within wider society, which occurred at a time when links were being forged with areas and communities beyond the southwest, which is evident in the increased imported ceramics, and it was likely the development of these links that helped to drive this change. The change in forms and fabrics consumed continued during the conquest and at the early middle to Roman period, and should be seen as a continuation of the change that began at the end of the Iron Age. Although it is likely military occupation of the region increased this pace of change, the conquest would have affected the shift in power structures of the region, with the military now becoming the most powerful group. The shift in society would have had far reaching effects, which would have manifested itself in a number of ways, and one of which would have been the adaptation of identity. The change in ceramic profiles is evidence of change in food preparation and consumption, both of which are central elements of an individual and community's identity. Contact with members of the military who would have been very familiar with these new dining vessels would have helped to stimulate the change seen in the use of vessels within the region. During the later Roman period, these vessel types were consumed in far greater numbers and the development of a road network as well as the river and coastal networks would have meant these vessels were more readily available to communities. The fact that tablewares and drinking vessels were more popular in Devon is only partly due to the development of these trade routes. The data shows a differing level of engagement with these vessel forms across the entire region. The increase in the number of tableware forms and mortaria consumed during this period suggests that change in eating habits that began in the aftermath of the Roman invasion had become a normal part of everyday life for many communities in Devon, while it is likely that the lower numbers within Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly represents an active choice of those communities not to use them as part of day-to-day -day cooking and eating practices. So the fact that in Cornwall these forms are mainly utilised in imported fabrics again highlights their exotic nature, and so the idea that they were never incorporated into daily life, most likely only used for certain occasions. The differing levels of engagement between Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly and Devon and Somerset with the new ideas and practices after the conquest is also reflected in the diverse range of ceramic fabrics that began to enter the region. There are a far greater range of fabrics utilised um, in Devon and Somerset in comparison to those sites found within Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. And the mapping of these fabrics, as well as the new vessel forms, all seems to suggest that the River Tamar may have acted as a boundary with only limited engagement with the new ceramic forms occurring to the west of the Tamar, while a deeper and more long-lived change took place to the east. These changes are also reflected in the use of personal dormant items uh, and coins, although I don't have time to say anything more here. And it is possible to begin to suggest that the boundary of the Roman Empire then followed the River Tamar with everything else to the west beyond the frontier. Um, thank you. Well, thank you, Sean. Um, and uh, if you unshare your screen, then mm -hmm. we'll 